you talk about machine learning is essentially learning by association or reasoning by association. And this do calculus is allowing for intervention. I like that word, uh, but action. So you also talk about counterfactuals. Yeah. And I'm trying to sort of understand the difference in counterfactuals and intervention. Uh, what's the, well, first of all, what is counterfactuals and why are they useful? Why are they especially uh, useful as opposed to just reasoning what what effect actions have? Well, counterfactual contains what we normally call explanations. Can you give an example? If of a I tell you that acting one way affects something else, I didn't explain anything yet. But if I if I ask you, uh, was it the aspirin that cured my headache? I'm asking for explanation, what cure my headache? Mm. And putting a finger on aspirin provides an explanation. It was aspirin that was responsible for your headache going away. If if you didn't take the aspirin, you would still have a headache. So by, by saying, if I didn't take aspirin, I would have a headache, you're thereby saying that aspirin is the thing that removes the headache. Yes, but you have to have another important information. I took the aspirin, and my headache is gone. Okay. It's very important information. Now I'm reasoning backward, and I said, what is the aspirin? Yeah. Okay. By considering what would have happened if everything else is the same, but I didn't take aspirin. That's right. So you That's know that fair. things took place you know, Joe killed Shmo, yeah. okay? And Shmo would, would be alive had John not used his gun, okay? okay? So that is the counterfactual. It, it, it conf had a confliction, it had a conflict here or clash between observed fact that he, he did shoot, okay? And the hypothetical predicate which says had he not shot, you have a clash, a logical clash. They cannot exist together. That's the counterfactual. And that is the source of our explanation of our the idea of responsibility, regret, and free will. Yeah, so it certainly seems uh, that's the highest level of reasoning, right? It's yes, and physicists do it all the time. Who does it all the time? Physicists. Physicists. In every equation of physics, Let's say you have a Hooke's law, and you put uh, one kilogram on the spring, and the spring is one meter, and you say, had this weight been two kilogram, the spring would have been twice as long. It's no problem in, for physicists mm -hmm. to say that, except that mathematics is only in, is in the form of equation, okay? equating the weight proportionality constant, and the length of the string. So you don't have the asymmetry in the equation of physics, although every physicist thinks counterfactually. Ask a high school kid, mm -hmm. had the weight been three kilograms, what would be the length of the spring? And they can answer it immediately because they do the counterfactual processing in their mind and then they put it into equation, algebraic equation, and they solve it. But a robot cannot do that. How do you make a robot learn these relationships? Uh, well, and, and why do you put learn? Suppose you learn. tell him, can you do it? So before you go learning, yeah. you have to ask yourself, suppose I give him all the information. Okay? Can, the, can the robot perform the task that I ask him to perform? Can he reason and say, no, it wasn't the aspirin. It was the good news you received on the phone. Right, because, well, unless the robot had a model, uh, a, a causal um, model of the world. Right, right. Uh, like, I'm right. sorry I have to linger on this. But now we have to linger and we have to say, how do we, how do, we do it? How do we build it? Yes. How do we build a causal model without a, a team of human experts no, uh, running around? Why don't, why don't you go to learning right away? You're too much involved with learning. Because I like babies. Babies learn fast. I'm oh, trying yeah. to figure out how they do it. Okay. Good. So yeah. That's another question. How do the babies come out with the counterfactual model of the world? Yep. And babies do that. Yeah. They know how to play with the, in the crib. 
they know which balls hits another one. Mm-hmm. And so they learn it by um, playful manipulation of the world. Yes. The simple world. Involve only toys and balls and chimes <laughs> but it's a if you think about it, it's a complex world we take for granted yes uh, how complicated and how... the kids do it by playful manipulation yeah. plus parents guidance peer wisdom yeah. and hearsay yeah. they meet each other can they say uh, You, sh- you shouldn't have uh, taken my toy <laughs> right but and they these multiple sources of information they're able to integrate yeah so the challenge is about how to integrate how to f- form these causal relationships from different sources of data correct so how 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 much is information is it to play how much could causal information is required to be able to play in the crib with different objects I, I don't know I haven't <laughs> experimented with the crib okay <laughs> not a crib picking up it's a very interesting manipulating question. physical objects on this very opening the pages uh, of a book all the task the, the physical manipulation tasks do you have a sense because my sense is the no, world is extremely complicated it's extremely complicated I agree and I don't know how to organize it because I've been spoiled by easy problems such as cancer and death <laughs> okay <laughs> and I'm, uh, yes, so first this. we have to start no, but it's to, yeah. easy it's easy in the sense that you have only uh, 20 variables yes. and they are just variables they are not mechanics yes. okay it's easy you, you just put them on the graph and they 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 speak to you yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you you're providing a methodology for for having, letting them yes. speak yeah so I'm working only in the abstract yes. the abstract was knowledge in knowledge out data in between 